Bitcoin hitting another milestone again today, reaching a market cap of more than one trillion dollars. Then there is this in case you missed it. Elon Musk updating his Twitter profile. Take a look at that. Uh, that is a Bitcoin with a little anime person there. And he tweeted out when when the picture changed just for a day whatever that means. Cryptocurrencies are developing a whole new business ecosystem around them. And like many things, everything old is new again. For more, let's bring in Flory Marquez, the co-founder of BlockFi. Flory, great to have you with us. It's great to see you, Melissa. It sounds like you're trying to be a bank built on Bitcoin. Can you sort of describe what you do and how you do it? Yeah, so back in 2017, my co-founder and I realized that in order for the ecosystem of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to grow, both retail investors and institutions would need access to financial products. And that's really what we know how to build. So at BlockFi, we're really trying to bridge traditional finance with crypto. And we offer that through a retail platform that allows retail investors to send crypto and cash that gets converted into crypto and access things like interest accounts. And on the institutional side, we innovate and we create financial products that make it easier for institutional investors to get access to the space through things like the Bitcoin Trust. Right. Um, I'm curious uh, with Bitcoin where it is right now, Flory, because one of your products is, is allowing people to borrow against their Bitcoin holdings. So you don't have to liquidate. Let's say you wanted to make a big purchase. Um, you can borrow against your, your wallet or your holdings. Um, have there been more requests for that? Is that sort of a booming part of your business as we see Bitcoin reach these prices? <laughs> yeah, I'm smiling because it's just been insane at BlockFi. We've had 50% month over month growth just two months in a row. And to your point, when people are holding Bitcoin, um, a lot of people have invested really early on and they want to access liquidity without selling. So that product, the loan product that allows you to borrow against Bitcoin um, is extremely unique because actually today, banks still don't include cryptocurrencies as part of your underwriting when they're looking to give you a mortgage or other types of financial products. So if you're looking to get liquidity, your options are very limited. And that's really where BlockFi comes in. So we've seen exponential growth in our loan portfolio. I believe it's almost doubled month over month as wow. people are like looking to take advantage of that liquidity. How much does it cost? I mean, what is the rate that you'd pay if you're borrowing against your Bitcoin holding? And does that rate change depending on the volatility of the coin? It does depend on the volatility of the coin. But as of today, we offer it to the coins with the largest market cap. And that's Litecoin, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And rates start as low as 4.5 percent and go all the way up to around 10 percent. And the thing that's really interesting about the loan product, if you're a lending nerd like I am, is we've been lending since January of 2018. And as you mentioned, the price of Bitcoin is extremely volatile. And we've actually never had a default loss in that entire period because we've been able to manage the portfolio and get access to the liquidity that we need because crypto trades 24 to 7. Mm -hmm. So it's an amazing product, both from the investor side and the retail side. So you can't borrow against a Dogecoin wallet. Uh, not on BlockFi <laughs> today. <laughs> All right. Flory, great to speak with you. Hope you'll keep us updated on the business. Fascinating stuff. Thank Flory you. Marquez of BlockFi. Some really smart products out there, Delano. I mean, if you are a long-term holder, you don't want to give that up, even if you have to, I don't know, pay tuition or buy a home. I would agree, Melissa. And I think this is a really interesting product. One, for, as you mentioned, for long-term holders that want to keep their coins and lend or be able to borrow based off of that. And as you mentioned, the price is volatile, but this is that steady interest rate uh, for the lender. And that's that's something that's really interesting. And I think, you know, long-term for myself, I'm a holder long-term in, in Bitcoin, Ethereum, as mentioned previous, previously on the show. But this is just another area where we see more adoption. As you mentioned, the guests say that there's adoption and interest from institutional investors. So I'm curious to see how that uh, you know, one turns their product and how we can, you know, as long term holders, see some th sort of appreciation from them. If I'm a Jamie Dimon, a JP Morgan or Brian Moynihan, a Bank of America guy, I got to be taking a look at this business model thinking this this is an interesting area. And, you know, they absolutely are. And, and, you know, BK, Brian Kelly, who, by the way, wrote the book on this literally in 2014, he recently said that gold's about a 10 trillion dollar market cap. Uh, commodity, if Bitcoin would have garnered 20 percent of that, you can do the math. Well, it got to a trillion today and I can double 50,000. So 
A lot of people out there think a 20% market cap of gold, you're talking about a $100,000 coin. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, I think Anthony Scaramucci the other night, I think on our network said he could see it there by the end of May. So there are a lot of reasons to be bullish here despite the price appreciation. My concern, obviously, is that we've seen significant drawdowns over the last few years, and it's probably right to suspect we'll see one again. But with that said, 20% of the market cap of gold seems to be in the crosshairs. All right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.